Hi, I'm Lindy Witten. Welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to be talking about uh, the big range of colours that you have for background in pastel painting. It can be a bit daunting to the new student and one of the things that I find in my classes is that students often ask, but how do you choose which colour? So we'll talk about that today uh, and just have a look at some examples. The idea behind choosing a colour is to help it unify your painting and I start to think about when I have my reference photo is am I going to choose a colour that's a complementary colour to the overall painting that uh, photo or am I going to choose a colour that's if the if the overall uh, reference material is warm am I going to choose a cool colour as a contrast if it's bright am I going to choose a dark colour if it's mostly green am I going to choose a complementary red so you can take a number of approaches to it. So for this one, what I find to be the most helpful is to start thinking about, okay, I want to choose a colour that will help me not have to put in so much of the detail. So there's a lot of uh, brownie, reddy colours in it, which would go quite well with this background colour. So then my leaves are going to be really the background and just with some little touches of, of highlights on them. I could decide that that's not the way I want to go. I want to go for more of a of something that's going to punch in the darks for me. I might make the choice of a darker brown and that would be just as effective too because that would help me establish the darks in the tree trunks and up in the, the leaves there. I could decide I want more of a, a dark green because that will really help establish the dark greens in the trees. I might even go really dark and go for a black. So once I start narrowing the choice down, I'll then lay out the colours that I am choosing and try to decide between. So I'll lay them all out and then I'll pop the photo at the intersection of those colours and that can help me decide. And in this case, I think I would go with that colour. It will give me a lot of lovely warmth and this is an autumn painting and I'm after that warmth. So what I'm going to do now is just take some photos and walk you quickly through the process of how what colours I would choose and why I would choose them and that might be helpful to you when you're making choices later on and then we'll have a look at some comparisons. So here we have a river scene, very dark rocks, very blue sky. So I could choose a blue and that will help me establish the blues of the sky and of the river and that's not a bad choice. But then I could decide I want to go for something a little bit warmer because the blues of the water and the sky are very, very cool. And I might choose again this colour because it would really help me establish these rocks and grasses and rocks down here in the foreground, which have a lot of detail in them. If I've already got the main body colour of it with this, then I'm not having to put so much detail in. I just need to put the highlights in. So that could be a very way, good way to go. However, here's an entirely different sort of uh, image. However, here's an entirely different sort of uh, image. It's a very steely grey seascape. And for that one, I would start looking at the blues, which could work. I might go for something quite a lot paler. Uh, but I find that a little bit too green. And I think for this one what I might end up with is this mauve colour. And I think that will help to go with. My other choice here could be black. Because after all it is night and there's a lot of very dark colours in here. That would mean that I could just start blocking in the brights and the mid-tones and the darks will be well established. It's quite hard often in pastel to get the darks as deep as you would like and so starting when you've got a very dark subject with a very dark background can be really helpful. Again something entirely different and this is an absolutely beautiful photo 
uh, grasslands and a really interesting sky. Blues and yellow. So this is a really good opportunity to use a complementary colour. Um, so for the yellow, I could just pop it on blue. It immediately picks up the blue in the sky and gives you an under colour for the uh, yellow grasses, the golden grasses. And some of that blue will show through and give us a really lovely look uh, of complementary zing in the foreground there. So I hope you're getting the idea of how this works now. Um, Okay, so that's the general idea. If you're doing a mostly green painting, perhaps you want to do a complementary colour of red. That also works in terms of uh, having a warm and cool contrast. So the greens will be cool, the red underpainting will be warm, and as the red shows through the green, it sets up a little vibrancy there. You might go for something that's harmonising. Um, the mauve colour is quite good at harmonising. You might choose uh, to use your base colour to establish your darks by choosing a very dark colour and then you won't have to be working on the darks or you might choose to use a light colour. I'm just going to show you a few examples now. So what I've done here is just drop in uh, the, using the same colour pastels and the same basic design to show you the difference that using a different colour as the under colour can make. So up here, just along the edge, I'll bring that a little bit closer for you so you can see it a little bit better. On this top one, you can see that the colour is a pale sandy colour. And what that's done in this uh, version of the painting is help establish the sand there really easily. I've hardly had to put any layers of paint on there at all, pastel on there at all. Uh, you, you can still see the sky, the water, uh, the little red cactus, succulent plants there. That's all there, but we didn't have to work too hard on the sand. Now, moving up. On this one, I've used the mauve colour background and that's uh, helped to establish the shadow area around here. I don't have to work so hard on the shadows now. In the sand area you can see that the underpainting has also helped to uh, establish little dips and hollows in the sand so that, that works very well there. I just move it a little bit out of my shadow. And again we've got the succulents here. Now, here's a completely different one. Let's move that one around a little. And for this one, I've used a green background, which is not what I would normally use for a, a seascape. The reason I tried it on the green was because there's a lot of green in the succulent plants here, and I felt that would help to establish that very easily. And it, it really has. Uh, wasn't difficult at all to make the succulents come up really green there. And the only issue then is the beach starts to look very cool because the green is showing through it. And even though I've used the same colour pastels, you can tell the other paintings are looking much more warm and beach-like than this, this particular one. So three different colours as backgrounds, giving you three completely different looks in the beach and the sand. So I'm going to pop those back here and just have one last look at those. Sorry, we'll put them out there a little bit. So using a light colour that helps to harmonise the sand, works great for the beach part. Using the green really helps the succulent area to stand out without using very many greens. And using the mauve gives you the depth and the shadows in the sand. So this one has a very sunny look about it, very warm look about it. This one is much cooler and you think it could even be a winter's day and this one is somewhere in between. Using black can be pretty exciting if you've got the right subject matter. So I just wanted to show one that I've done on black paper 
So I'm sorry for any reflections you're getting there on it, but you get the general idea. It's a, a street with uh, lighting at night and reflections on the wet street and the cobblestones. And the black has really helped to bring out the shadowed areas. It made it very easy to paint because I just painted the highlights on top of the black and it's a very effective way of, of creating drama immediately in your painting by choosing a black background. I'm just going to show you a few more examples and talk about the colour choices I made and then hopefully you can go off and make some good colour choices yourself and, and have a little bit more idea about how to choose a colour for the effect that you're after. So here I've done a hummingbird on a cactus flower and you can see right there the colour of the paper. It's a sienna warm brown colour and it's just helped me to establish the colours in the cactus here. Because there was so much green I wanted a little bit of warmth to come through here so I chose a warm brown colour to go underneath. It helped with the rocks, establishing the, the shape of the rocks and the, the colour of the rocks. But it also gave warmth, showing through the trees here in the rocks, more coming through the trees. And so it really did help to establish a little bit of warmth in what could otherwise have been a very, very cool painting. So another seascape of the East Coast, and this time I've used black which might seem an odd choice for a seascape, but it really helped me establish the colours here. I've let a lot of it throw, show through back here in the trees and even a bit on the beach in the shadows, on the rocks, and I think it gives it uh, a bit of drama. So another desert uh, painting here. This was done at Joshua Tree National Park, and it's just a beautiful place. And what I wanted to capture here was the luminosity of those huge rocks in the morning sun um, and just here I love and up through here and the way I got those colours was for starting off with that warm sienna base you can just see it poking through here it's helped to establish the rocks there and it gives a little warmth to the desert sands there too Let's zoom in a little bit on those rocks and you can see what I mean it's, it's just peeking through and really giving it a warmth and here I've done a painting of some rocks on the east coast of Tasmania uh, really beautiful oranges and blues here and what I used was a steely blue the darkest blue color there you can just see it on the edges around here. I used that steely blue because it helped to establish the dark mass of the rocks very easily from the beginning and then I could just scrumble over those beautiful colours there. See what I mean? How it's really allowed me to put the beautiful colours over the, the rocks without doing too much work and gives you a great sense of the rocks there. Here I have another one of the East Coast. This was a more somber overcast day and what I really loved about this was that sort of low light look and the way it made some of the colours sing in the rocks so we just and you can see on the rocks there these beautiful touches of orange where the lichens are and because there was so much blue in this I actually opted for a steely blue again which helped to establish those rocks. Another seascape and this time I could have gone a number of ways again. I could have chosen a blue background to help with the sky and the water and those distant hills. I could have chosen a sandy light colour to help with the sand and it, or I could have chosen this middle ground colour to help with those mid-tones here, here and down here. Or again I could have chosen a complementary colour. I could have chosen a mauvey purple colour to shine through the warmth of the yellows and, and show the purple through there. What I did cho choose was a mid colour, this kind of colour here. And that's just somewhere in between all of those colours, gives a bit of dark as shadows through the sand here where I haven't quite covered it. 
it also gives me a little bit of colour coming through the blue of the sea to help it not be so blue and give you a sense because it's quite shallow water it give you a sense of what's underneath there um, this is a painting that you can see on one of my other videos uh, I'll do a step by step on how I painted this and for this one I chose a mauve colour a little bit deeper than this you can just see it down here in the corner and that just set up some nice uh, shadows in the vegetation here it gave a little warmth here to the wet area of the sand and shows through the sand as bits of uh, shadow where animal, birds or people have walked in the sand and left their footprints. So